Hello everyone and welcome. This video is about setting up a proof of concept for a potential customer. In this video, we're going to present a basic topology, test and verify the topology, move on to configuring an SSLI device with L2 topology using the wizard, test and verify that configuration, creating and adding a certificate chain, we're going to use a software called XCA, testing and verifying the setup, then adding a bypass domain, in our case, we'll be using the word bank, testing and verifying once we're done with that, adding a bypass category, we'll be using the categories financial services and healthcare. Once we're done, we'll test and verify that setup. And then we're going to touch up on some of the advanced settings, like adding a passive security device on a mirrored port and adding a second path for load balancing purposes. Now let's look at the basic topology that we have at the moment. Here we have a client machine which is a Windows machine with the IP address 30.99.1.5 slash 16. It's in the subnet 309900 and the gateway setup on this is 309901.10. Traffic will flow from the client machine towards the gateway router which has the IP address 309910 slash 16 and is on the same subnet as the client machine. We can reach the internet from the client machine through the gateway router. Later on, we'll also look at how we can change this topology into an L2 topology with an SSLI device in the middle, which will look like this. Now let's have a look at how the basic topology functions. We've opened our client machine using remote desktop. Here we'll open a browser window. We're using Mozilla Firefox at the moment. Let's open a website that uses HTTPS. For example, we're going to open finance.yahoo.com. Let's look at the certificate of this website. If we go to more options and click on view certificates and details, you can see the whole certificate chain of trust. And you can see that it's verified by semantic, which in turn is verified by VeriSign. You can also open another website, for example, bankofamerica.com. Here you can also see that it's been verified by Semantic Corporation. You can go to the details and see the whole chain of trust. Now that we've verified that our basic topology works and we have internet access and we can open the websites and also view the certificate chains, let's move on to the SSLI device and configure it using the wizard. Let's see how the L2 topology works. We have a client machine which is our Windows machine on one side and a gateway router on the other side. We've introduced an A10 SSLI device, which is an A10 Thunder 3230 in our case, in the middle of the network. And there's a security device connected to it in the bump in the wire mode. The A10 device has two partitions on it, the inside partition and the outside partition. The client and the gateway are on the same subnet as shown previously. Traffic is going to flow from the client machine into the inside partition of the A10 device. This traffic will be in SSL. Here in the inside partition, it will be decrypted and sent out towards the security device in HTTP. Once the security device is done, it's going to send it back, but this time into the outside partition in HTTP format. Here it will be re-encrypted and sent out towards the gateway router in SSL format. We'll need a total of four interfaces on the A10 device, one for incoming traffic, two for connectivity with the security device, and a final one for connectivity with the gateway router. Now let's move on and configure all of this using the wizard. You have to enter the IP address of your machine, forward slash templates, and click enter. Once you click enter, your A10 SSLI wizard will be opened. Here, the first step is to go into management and log into our device. Enter username and password and click login. Once we're done, we click on the wizard button, which takes us to the configuration wizard. Here we have an option for selecting either the default, which is the L2 single path topology, or we can click on custom where we can look at multiple topologies. We're going to click on default, which selects the L2 single path topology and click on next. Once we click next, we are taken to the decryption part of the configuration. Here we are going to configure the ingress interface the certificate and the outbound to the security device interface. For the ingress, we select Ethernet 1 and give it the IP address. Next, we have to create our own SSL certificate and key. 
You can also select from a list of already available certificates and keys, but since we don't have any, let's click on create. We'll give it name test. Common name will also be test. Validity is fine and the organization can also be test. Once you click on create, we'll have a certificate created on the A10 device, which will be forged by the SSLI. Once created, you can click on the drop-down menu and select the certificate that we just created. For the outbound, we'll select Ethernet 2 as our interface. You need to keep in mind that these two interfaces will be grouped together and a single IP address will be applied to it. Clicking on Next, we are taken to the re-encryption part. Here we select Ethernet 3 as our inbound interface from the security device and enter the IP address for it. After entering the IP address, we select the egress interface, which is Ethernet 4, and enter the default gateway. Now we click Next and we are taken to the bypass configuration options. We are going to skip this section right now since we are going to go into the details of all of these later on in the video. So we click Next. Here we are presented with a confirmation page where we can look at the summary of everything that we just configured. We click on Finish and Apply. Once applied, we are taken to the configuration page. Here you can look at all the already configured options and you can go into some advanced options which we will explore later on in the video. Now that we are done with the configuration of our SSLI device, let's move on to our remote desktop and see what happens when we open the same websites. So previously we opened the finance.yahoo.com. Let's do that again. Here you can see that we have a security warning. If we click on I understand the risks and add exception and then click on view, you can see that the issuer here is test, which is the CA that we created on our A10 device. You can also see that there is no certificate chain here, which is the reason behind the security warning. We are not going to accept the certificate. Now let's move on to the next part of our video where we counter this problem. Let's look at how we can create certificates and then import them in order to avoid those security warnings. So for our setup to work, we're going to create a set of three chained certificates. The top one is going to be the corporate root. Then we're going to have corporate int1 and corporate int2. So first, we're going to take the corporate root and export it in PAM format, just the certificate, and on the client, import it as corp root cert. This will be the first file that we import. Secondly, we're going to export the corp int2 in PKCS12 format, which is the complete chain of certificates plus the key and on the A10 device, import it in PFX format with the name corp root CA. The third step that we need to do is we need to export each and every certificate, create a chain out of them. This can be done either directly in the XCA software that we are going to use or you can do it in any text editor. You take each and every certificate and concatenate them in a single file in PEM format with the root at the bottom, int1 in the middle, and int2 at the top. Once this is done and we have a single PEM file with the whole chain, we are going to import this into the A10 device in PEM format with the name corp root chain. So in total, we are going to import three files, two on the A10 device and one on the client machine. Let's look at how we can create the certificate chain that we just talked about in the XCA software. I've opened the software. In file, I create a new database. I'm going to give it the name test and save. It asks me for a password. For simplicity, I'm just going to use ABC. Now that we have the database created, we can create certificates. We click on the certificates tab and then on the new certificate. Here, one important thing to note is that you have to select SHA-256 as your signature algorithm. Click apply also that all the certificates that we create are CA. Click on subject, enter the information. Once we've entered the information, we click on generate a key and click on create. This creates our key and we can click OK. We've successfully created our root certificate. Now, once we click on that, 
you can go and click on new certificate. Here you can see that the corp root is at the top of our chain. We select SHA-256. Click apply all then move on to subject and enter the information. Similarly we create a third certificate that will come under this one in the tree. Now that we have the complete chain, we can export the certificates the way we described in the slide. So for the crop root, this is the certificate that's going to be imported into the client machine. We click on export, select the PEM format which is .crt and click OK. Secondly, for crop in 2, you have to make two exports. The first one is in P12 format and the second one you can either create yourself in a text editor or you can use PEM chain as your format. These last two files are the ones that we are going to import on the A10 device. Now that we have our certificates created, let's import them. The first one that we are going to import is the root cert on the client machine. You open your browser, click on tools, options, click on advanced, view certificates, click on import, We've placed this certificate on the desktop. We select that and click open. You can see that we've imported the certificate. Just to confirm, you can click on view and check the details. You can also do this procedure in Chrome. You can click on the settings, scroll down, show advanced settings, scroll further down. In the HTTPS SSL section, you click on manage certificates click on import, click next, browse and here select the certificate that you want to import. Click on open, next, next and the import has been done. Now for the next step we import the certificates in our A10 device. In the configuration tab we go to the third line where it says import, we click on import select the format as PFX, give it the name that we decided, choose the file and enter the password. Once we've imported the P12 file, we can click on the drop down button and select the certificate. One limitation that the A10 system has is that it cannot extract the certificate chain of trust from this file. So to enable the A10 device to get the chain, we're going to click on import once more and in PEM format, import the corp root chain that we created. Give it the name corp root chain and click on import. Now to use this, we're going to click on advanced and here in change certificates option, click on the drop down button and select the corp root chain. Once we've done that, we scroll down and click on save and apply. Now that we've imported all the certificates that we discussed in the slide, let's move on to our browser in the client machine and see what happens. So if we open the same website, finance.yahoo.com, now if you check, you can see that it gives us the chain that we created ourselves and imported on the A10 device. This means that our SSLI setup is working. We can also see that if we open the bankofamerica.com website, the certificate is forged and it shows that it's been verified by Corp N2, which is the certificate that we created ourselves. Now the next thing that we are going to look at are the bypass configuration options. So if we move back to our A10 device here we can see that on the configuration page we have the three bypass options. We are not going to look at the bypass by IP list. The first thing that we are going to look at is the bypass domain list. We click on the checkbox. We are presented with this pop-up. Here we enter the word bank that we decided earlier and it's shown here. Now any URLs containing the word bank will be bypassed. You click on save and apply the settings.
Now that we've applied the bypass domain options, let's go to the browser in our client machine and open a website with the word bank in its URL. So for example, the website of Bank of America will be bypassed right now. And you can see that the chain is from VeriSign and, and the Bank of America certificate is being verified. Now if you open another banking website, for example, US Bank, it will also be bypassed and you can see that it's been verified by Entrust and not our certifying authority on the A10 device. But if you open a banking website that does not have the word bank in its URL, the story will be different. So for example, if you open wellsfargo.com, you can see that it carries our forged Corp in 2 certificate, which has been issued by Corp in 2. And if you open it, you can see the complete chain that we created. Now let's say we wanted to bypass all the banking websites. For that, we are going to go back to our A10 device and go to the bypass category list option. One thing you should know is that for the bypass category list option, you require a URL classification license. To acquire that license, you have to talk to your sales team. If you already have the license, please refer to my other video where I explain how you can import the license and apply it to your SSLI device. You can also refer to your device's deployment guide for this. So we click on the bypass category list option and here we select financial services. We can also select health and medicine. You click on save and apply. Once this is applied, we are going to go back to our client machine and reopen the Wells Fargo website and see whether it's bypassed or not. So coming here, we refresh the page and once refreshed, you can see that now we have the Semantic Corporation verifying the Wells Fargo certificate. If we go into the details, you can see that we no longer have our own created certificate chain. Instead, we have the VeriSign and Semantic certificate chain. This means that we've successfully bypassed any websites related to financial services. Now that we are done with everything else on the agenda for this video, let's move on to some of the advanced options and touch up on a few of them. If your deployment of the SSLI device requires you to have a passive security device connected to the SSLI, what you can do is you can add a mirrored interface. Here we've connected Ethernet 7 to a passive security device. We select this and click save and apply. Once you apply the settings, you would have successfully created a mirrored interface on your SSLI device. Another thing that you can do here is if you wanted to have a second security device connected to your A10 where you wanted to do some sort of load balancing, you can simply add another path. You can select the interface and then give it an IP address. The same way you have to do it on the re-encryption side where you select the interface and give it an IP address. This can also be done at the initial setup time. When you're in the wizard, you can click on custom and in L2, this is the topology that we were using. We can simply click on L2 multiple path. Now, if you click next, you'll be taken to the different configurations. But since we already have the L2 single path configured, it's easier to just go into the configuration tab and add a path here. Once you've added a path and given it an IP address, you will successfully have a second security device connected to the A10 device, which can do load balancing with the first security device that you already have. If you want to go into the details of how we created the certificate, what software you need, and how you can import them, you can go to my certificate management video where we go into further details of the whole process. Thank you.